Hi there everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be talking about basal cell carcinomas. Basal cell carcinomas are the most common type of eyelid tumors and if you want to learn more about these then please stay tuned. So in terms of basal cell carcinomas, who actually gets basal cell carcinomas and what are they? So different types of skin cancers can occur and they range from being fairly benign. And what I mean by that is they don't really progress and move anywhere else other than where they are located. So a metastatic disease is essentially where you get a type of cancer in one location and then that cancer can spread to other parts of the body or adjacent areas of whatever part of the anatomy they are affected. So skin cancers are no different. There are certain types that can spread. So that is your melanoma type of skin cancers, which are very worrying and concerning. The thing to note with a basal cell carcinoma is that it does not really metastasize and it stays in the location it is initially found. The caveat to that is if it is not diagnosed um, early and it is allowed to progress over many years usually, then it can invade into deeper tissues. So that's the caveat to that. In terms of who gets basal cell carcinomas, the common population that will get these non spread in types of skin cancers are Caucasian patients, blonde hair, blue eyed, and where they occur is typically in sun exposed areas, such as in and around the eyelids, the ears, the scalp, the neck. So it's not uncommon for patients to have had a history of these types of cancers and had them previously removed, i.e. excised. So the first thing to ascertain from the patient is, have they had these types of skin cancers before? Have they had an occupation or do they currently have an occupation in which they are exposed to increased amounts of UV? So for example, do they work outdoors as part of their normal day-to-day -day life compared to somebody, for example, who works in an office-based setting? The other things to ascertain are, do they use sunscreen? Have they always used sunscreen? Do they burn easily? And is there a family history that can sometimes be important in certain types of conditions where these cancers are more frequently found and observed? So all of these will help you to try and understand whether the patient is at risk of developing a basal cell carcinoma to begin with. In terms of the signs that we would see from the perspective of an eye doctor is classically a lid lump, and that could be on the upper lid or lower lid, and that could be on either eye, and it could be located medially, i.e. towards the nose, or laterally towards the outside, i.e. away from the nose. Now, the hallmark features of a basal cell carcinoma are very characteristic. The thing I should outline here is there are different types of basal cell carcinoma, also known as a rodent ulcer. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to talk about the most commonly seen one, which is a rodent ulcer. There are other types and they can differ in terms of their appearance. However, they all have the same name of a basal cell carcinoma. A rodent ulcer is the name given to a certain type of basal cell carcinoma, which I will be talking about today. Looking at a lid lump of a basal cell carcinoma, the hallmark features are it will disrupt the local architecture of the eyelid. And what I mean by this is that there will be lash loss, there will be invasion within the tissue and therefore a crater type appearance will almost be created. And within this, there will be new blood vessels found. When these new blood vessels bleed, the patient will notice this and report to you that maybe this lid lump is going through cyclical changes of bleeding, then crusting and then repeat bleeding. And this is something that should be taken very seriously presence of bleeding. 
Also, what the patients may describe is an increase in size, and this may occur slowly over time, or it may be in its initial acute phase, and therefore the patient may notice a rapid progression of size. Other characteristic features of a basal cell carcinoma are rolled edges, a shiny appearance, and a crater-like depression. So it's important to understand the patient profile, their potential risks for developing a basal cell carcinoma, and then considering the characteristic features that may be present on examination. Once you have understood these, for example, the patient may have had a history of a previous basal cell carcinoma removed, and this lid lump may have recurred in exactly the same location, then this is a basal cell carcinoma recurrence until proven otherwise. In terms of how you would proceed with a fresh lid lump that you suspect to be a basal cell carcinoma, most of these lesions can be diagnosed on clinical examination. However, if there is any uncertainty, then a biopsy can be obtained and sent to the laboratory for further analysis. In terms of what treatment options are available for these, there are some lesions that do respond to certain medical therapies. However, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be talking about the most common mainstay treatment, which is surgical excision. This can also be done in several different ways, but broadly speaking, the two approaches are, it's either done surgically, and on the day, what will happen is you'll attend theater, you'll have the lid lump removed, it will be sent off to the laboratory, and the laboratory analysis and results can take a couple of weeks. During this time, the patient will wait and then come back to clinic. The results will be reported to the patient, and if it is clear, then no further treatment will be required. And importantly, during surgery, if the tumour, for example, let's say for argument's sake, is five centimetres in terms of its diameter, clear margins either side of the lid lump will be aimed for to try and ensure that all of the tumour and a bit more is removed so that patients will be left tumour free with a low risk of recurrence. The other approach which appears to be in vogue at present at several institutes is that of a Mohs procedure. A Mohs procedure is a very neat technique whereby patients will attend an institute which is usually run by dermatologists alongside ophthalmologists and the patients will come along, they will have an assessment done initially, they'll then be put under the knife as it were, the lesion will be removed with clear margins but then on the same day whilst the patient is resting in the minor operations treatment room the doctors will analyse the sample taken under the microscope. After careful analysis of the tissue removed under the microscope, if the tumour has been removed in its entirety with clear margins, then that just leaves restoration of what may have been removed from the patient. This could include a direct skin-to-skin -skin closure, or if excessive amounts of tissue have been removed, then alternate skin options and grafts will need to be entertained. The benefits of the Mo procedure is that everything is done on the same day, albeit it's quite a lengthy day for the patients, but they get clearance and removal of the tumour and the restorative work also happens on the same day. Once this has occurred with whichever approach is used, then patients will remain under surveillance in clinics for a certain number of years to monitor for recurrence. Even though the recurrence is very, very low, particularly with the Mohs approach, it still can theoretically happen. The other thing to discuss with patients is if they have risk factors, for developing these basal cell carcinomas, then it's important to educate them about good sun hygiene practices to try and reduce their risk of developing these in the first place.
Thank you so much for watching this video about basal cell carcinomas. We've discussed what they are, we've focused on the most common type, what the risk factors are, how the most common type appears when one looks at it, and the options with respect to treatment. If you've liked this video, then please do give it a thumbs up, subscribe, please do share my videos. Thank you so much for your support. Take care.